Sutter from Loose Pixel, and welcome back. Lately, if you've been following my channel, you'll notice that I've been live streaming a little bit more. In fact, behind the scenes, I've been putting a lot of time and effort into building and optimizing a beautiful live streaming setup, but I've been testing it out on Shadow of the Urtree on the latest expansion for Elden Ring, which is the latest release by From Software and the producer and now president of From Software, Hidetaka Miyazaki, who I go on about every now and then. I am a bit of a fanboy. On my channel over the years, my favorite books to review that I've put my most passionate production behind have been all of the Souls books, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Sekiro, and of course, Elden Ring. And of course, it should go without saying that Souls games and Miyazaki's philosophy have been at the core of my artistic growth and maturation over the years. And when I paint, I love putting on a pair of headphones and listening to Souls lore YouTubers such as Zuli the Witch, Zeostorm, and of course my favorite, Vati Vidya. In fact, I love listening to all types of Souls-related videos, and one in particular that I want to talk about today and offer my own perspective on is what is it that makes Souls games so special? There are so many, quote, Souls-like games that have surfaced over the years, and from an artistic perspective, and even to a certain degree, the gameplay perspective as well, they've done a very, very good job at achieving something very close to Miyazaki's vision. But I'm sure that there are many of you out there that might agree with me when I say that despite many of these games being beautifully designed and having engaging gameplay and very interesting stories, there's something very unique and very special about Souls games. And it's not just Elden Ring, it's all of the Souls games. There's something magical and rich and engaging about the lore, about the art, about the environment, about the creatures, about the gameplay. There's something so hand-painted about its beautiful artistic environments that other games just can't seem to achieve to that same level of artistry and mastery. So of course, being the artist that I am, and being somebody who scrutinizes artistry and artistic expression, this is my livelihood and it's what I teach after all, I want to offer you an artist's perspective on what makes Souls games not only so great, but what makes them so uniquely and untouchably great as well. And hopefully by offering you this little insight into what I believe is at the core of Miyazaki's philosophy, this will greatly help you revisit your own philosophy as an artist and apply that to your own work. I believe that the quality of Miyazaki's artistic creations starts with the individual who Miyazaki is as a person, and what his personality and his core beliefs are. I also believe that despite the fact that Miyazaki is known for being a very flexible and attentive leader, albeit a very hands-on and involved leader, down to the very finest minutia of every element of his games, his core philosophy is demonstrably unbending. Where so many creators nowadays are overly conscious and even fearful of whoever is covering the cost of their games, Miyazaki has invested time and effort into ensuring that his and his team's vision can be given the needed time and patience required for it to reach its full potential. He uses whatever tools he has at his disposal. Charm, know-how, collaboration, wit, conviction, to convince his supporters that their patience will be greatly rewarded. If you want to extend a hand of gratitude towards those who enabled Miyazaki to demonstrate and live out his skill as a game designer in his early days at From Software, it would be From Software themselves. From 
saw something in Miyazaki and offered him the chance to salvage a struggling franchise. Given this opportunity, Miyazaki rose to the occasion, taking the helm and leading from to a great and memorable victory. The echoes of his games have continued to reverberate through the hearts and minds of creators and fans ever since, decades later. Needless to say, Miyazaki has and continues today to prove its quality. This includes the most recent release of Shadow of the Earth Tree, which I've been greatly enjoying live since its release. It demonstrates that his efforts through all his fame and glory have been to maintain the authenticity and depth of his vision through every subsequent Souls game release. How is this possible? What's the magic fuel that has granted Miyazaki the gift to maintain this quality of vision, this depth of expression over all this time? What magical fuel granted him the focus and dedication to maintain his sincerity and authenticity of artistic expression? What magical fuel has granted Miyazaki and his incredible artistic team to continue to surprise us and impress us and engage us, to bring us all together in admiration when it could feel otherwise impossible for him to push his talents any further? Well, many YouTubers speak about his role-playing background. Others speak about his incredible ability to work alongside artists, animators, game designers and directors, helping the entire team, which is bafflingly small considering their achievements, to come together and share an artistic vision in unison. Some speak about his incredible patience and hard work ethic. Well, I agree with all of the above. I think they're all very true. However, I have known countless, endlessly patient, industrious, talented, collaborating creators and bosses who have put their hearts and souls into their work, working countless hours on the perfection of their vision. But for some mysterious reason, in the end, most of them haven't managed to create something as memorable and life-defining as a Souls game. Ironically, I feel that the answer has always been hiding in plain sight. And no, I'm not talking about that alleged secret game bible that Miyazaki keeps hidden away in a platinum safe in the back room of the 250th floor mezzanine of his fortress, although apparently Miyazaki does have a quote, Bible-like document that he keeps to himself. Game designers and analysis will speak at length about Miyazaki's unique methods, but I feel that they aren't looking deeply enough. I'm going to offer an answer to this age-old question that transcends expertise and effort. Let's rewind the clock to Friday, June 21st at 12.15 a.m. I launched my freshly downloaded expansion of Shadow of the Erd Tree, walked through the small claustrophobic starting cave, and after a few short steps forward, exited onto the vast, spectacular landscape. The great shadow draped scadu tree towers overhead, overlooking the rusty golden grass and spirit gravestone carpeted spirit grave plains. As the subsequent days passed, I went on to explore crumbling castles, toxic swamps seasoned with crumbling gothic ruins, a dark, haunted forest infested with nightmarish, frenzied, blood-borne esque monstrosities, viciously reacting to the slightest sound or movement I make. In my slow, unspoiled, and careful exploration of this new land, despite the hours I have played, it's humbling to know, yet again, that I have barely even scratched the surface of this grand masterpiece. But most importantly, I don't intend to rush through it. I know, from experience, that despite the fact that my progress might feel slow, and the temptation to look up a quick guide online might help me uncover many of the secrets I have most likely walked right by unknowingly, it's my intention to experience Miyazaki and from his vision 
as I feel it was intended. By doing so, I'm already demonstrating my point, not only as someone indulging in theory crafting, although I don't believe this is a theory, but clear fact in my opinion, that the reason I can move forward through this game so slowly, yet feel an intense sense of fulfillment and satisfaction and engagement is because every tiny detail down to every unique blade of grass has been designed with care. I adore every beautiful, elegant, terrifying, intimidating, overwhelming detail because every detail has been handled with absolute care. I can revisit the same location a hundred times and never fail to feel a sense of newness every time, as if the world, the creatures, and the characters are truly sentient and grow and evolve with me. Every creature interaction is unpredictable and demanding of my full attention. The trees don't feel modeled. They feel as if they've grown from tiny seedlings for thousands of years, reaching blinding heights as they pierce the clouds above. Every now and then, the silver phantom of a fellow player wafts past me, reminding me that despite feeling utterly isolated in this murderous place, I'm never truly alone. I turn my camera toward the floor and take a moment to observe the so easily taken for granted frenzied glowing pool of water under my feet, or the weathered ghostly gravestone by my side, the rain-stained spears stacked up clumsily on a weapon rack next to the soldier boot damaged stone stairs, and take it all in. I listen to the words of an NPC and feel a heavy sense of longing in her voice, or the tooth-clenching bitterness in the voice of a warrior and father as he describes a stinging betrayal and I feel a genuine sense of empathy for them. I quickly learn to know and care for them, struck with curiosity towards the life experiences they had that led to such a horrible perspective in life. I feel refreshed and invigorated to hear the voice and words of a leader who, despite his and his people's terrible circumstances, can speak with such lucid optimism, filling me with a much needed sense of relief and hope. And then, I realize, right there and then, over and over again, what the true magic of Miyazaki's vision is, a vision that has deeply penetrated the hearts and minds of his gifted and dedicated artists and creators at From Software. We care so deeply for Souls games because Souls games were made by someone who genuinely cares. The grass isn't just an asset, randomly brushed across a polygonal surface. It's a carefully groomed field of wild wheat, offering soft comfort to the fallen. The gravestones aren't carelessly scattered about the plains. They're carefully planned and placed by loved ones so they can all have their private moment to mourn and remember the loss of their loved ones. The castle entrance isn't just an impressive piece of detailed Gothic architecture. It's a monument to a living God, an achievement of countless gifted craftspeople who dedicated their lives in service of someone they loved or feared or worshipped. Then I look at the dagger or sword or bow or talisman in my hand. I look at it closely and witness that same level of purpose and care and meaning that went into its creation. Unfathomably, this level of care is evident in every single detail of every element in every Souls game ever created. Everything that Miyazaki and From Touch are created by the hands that care deeply about what they build, what they design, what they write, what they sing, what they play. In my humble opinion, Miyazaki's philosophy is a worthy life lesson. Souls games are not simply well-designed games, rather a tangible example of how the kindness, empathy, respect, and exceptional care that an individual such as Hidetaka Miyazaki demonstrates can inspire the lives of all whom his creations touch in the most 
beautiful way, bringing out a quality and depth of expression that can deeply impact not only the creators of these masterpieces, but the millions upon millions of souls who have wandered the beautiful worlds that he and From have created. To date, only days after the game's release of Shadow of the Earth Tree, they have celebrated over 5 million players. But here's where you come in, my fellow Tarnished. In my humble opinion, once again, I don't believe that Miyazaki possesses any more or less quality than you do. He isn't a god or a saint. He's a kind, soft-spoken man who enjoys a good laugh. He isn't dark or mysterious. Only his artistic creations are. What differentiates Miyazaki from so many of us is that he has learned through experience and thoughtfulness that despite the fact that he's one of many millions of people on this planet, the love and care that he gives of himself towards his creations aren't meaningless and pointless and forgettable. He realizes that the quality of his thoughts, the quality of his compassion, the quality of his respect, the quality of his honesty and his feelings are extremely valuable. He understands that the more completely he gives of himself, the more deeply the lives that he touches will be moved and inspired. He refuses to take his gift of care for you for granted and feels extremely accountable to this reality which he himself decided to fully embrace. He realizes that even a geeky, introverted, shy, tabletop RPG playing nerd can grip the hearts of millions. And because he realizes that his voice has true value towards others, he prioritizes the integrity of it above all else. He refuses to partake in anything that doesn't live up to his incredibly high standard of respect and care, and focuses his efforts in making sure his collaborators protect the time and right he has to do so. Like Miyazaki, you have a depth of compassion that can grip the hearts of millions. When you learn to see and respect and protect the care and time it requires for you to express yourself artistically in the most moving and profound way possible, and not compromise for anyone or anything, even sometimes at the cost of lost opportunities, then you too will learn, like Miyazaki, that your voice is the most important voice in the entire universe, and we're all desperate to hear it. Before letting you go, I want to share a few words from Miyazaki himself, quoted from the book You Died by Jason Killingsworth and Keza MacDonald. Having such a hands-on approach to everything is very important to me, but it's also important to the company, he says. The most important thing is to create something great, no matter how long it takes. The development team understands that. The surrounding staff understand that. The chair people understand that. So the way I see it, it's not about having the time to do everything. It's creating the time to do everything. Ensuring it. Because without that, from would not be from. If we don't create something great, that compromises what we're all here to do. And with that said, I love you all with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.